Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Middle East Matters. I'm Julia Kim. Coming up on today's program. Over a dozen people are killed in the Saudi-led coalition's deadliest strikes on Yemen's capital since 2019. This comes on the heels of a deadly Houthi drone attack on coalition member UAE. A Palestinian man threatens to set himself on fire to avoid eviction from the Flashpoint East Jerusalem neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah. And wrestling control of the narrative, Palestinian militant group Hamas launches its own TV series in response to Israeli hit shows like Fauda. But first, tit-for-tat attacks have claimed the lives of over a dozen people in Yemen's capital. The airstrikes on Sana'a, carried out by the Saudi-led coalition, are the deadliest there since 2019. It appears to be retaliation for Monday's Houthi drone attack on Abu Dhabi, which killed three people. The Iran-backed Houthis have been at war with the Saudi-led coalition since 2015. James Mulholland and Yuka Roya have this report. Tit for tat. A coalition led by Saudi Arabia carried out airstrikes in the Yemeni capital Sana'a, controlled by Houthi militants. This hours after the group claimed air raids on sensitive targets in the coalition member United Arab Emirates, the first deadly attack on the country by the Houthis. The successful operation was carried out with five ballistic missiles and numerous drones. The armed forces, whilst implementing what they promised, renew their warning to the countries of aggression that they will receive more painful hits. Monday's strikes, carried out by missiles and drones, set off explosions in fuel trucks and caused a fire near Abu Dhabi airport. The Houthis said they were a warning shot to the Emiratis. The UAE had scaled down its military presence in Yemen in 2019, but in recent months, it intensified its involvement, stepping up support for local Yemeni forces who recently took an unexpected victory over the Houthis in the provinces of Shabwa and Marib. While Abu Dhabi vowed this, quote, terrorist attack would not go unpunished, condemnation poured in from other Gulf states and the West, including the US, the UK and France. The United Nations called for calm. Attacks on civilian infrastructure and civilians are prohibited by international humanitarian law. The Secretary General calls upon all parties to exercise maximum restraint. Regional analysts say the attack could mark a major escalation in Yemen's seven-year war, with the Houthi military spokesman announcing that the rebel group will soon launch an important military operation in the UAE. A Palestinian man has threatened to set himself on fire to prevent his family's eviction in the flashpoint East Jerusalem neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah. Israeli officials say the land uh, his house is on has been allocated for the construction of a school since 2017. Eviction orders in Sheikh Jarrah contributed to last year's 11-day Gaza war. A last-ditch effort to keep his family home. A Palestinian man took to his roof with a gas canister and a group of supporters Monday. Mohamed Salhia vowing to set himself on fire if a planned eviction is carried out. I won't leave my home. Either I live here or I die here. If we leave, where will we go? We're not scared anymore. Sahia's home is in the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood of East Jerusalem, where hundreds of Palestinians are currently facing eviction. Many live in homes built on land that belonged to Jewish groups before the founding of modern Israel in 1948. That year's war of independence, though, ended with East Jerusalem controlled by Jordan, who then sold the land to displaced Palestinians. Israel captured East Jerusalem from Jordan in 1967's Six-Day War and later annexed it, a move that remains unrecognized by most foreign governments. Since then, though, some 200,000 Jewish settlers have moved into East Jerusalem as a legal battle over Sheikh Jarrah has wound through Israeli courts. Last October, the Supreme Court proposed that the Palestinian families become protected tenants of the Jewish group now holding the land deed. But that deal was rejected. The Jerusalem municipality says it needs Sahia's land to build a school. Critics say the move is a land grab aimed at pushing Palestinians out of East Jerusalem. It's good to build a school, but why to 
take out families from their home and not use another public land that you already confiscated in the past and gave it to settlers. The Sheikh Jarrah dispute was a major spark in 11 days of violent conflict in May 2021, in which more than a dozen Israelis and more than 250 Palestinians lost their lives. Now, the conflict in Gaza is something we're used to seeing on the news, but now events in the Palestinian territory are popping up on the small screen as fiction, too. On the back of Israeli hit shows like Fauda, Hamas is throwing itself into television production with a series to tell its side of the story. Olivia salazar Winspear has the story. The star of David on the flag, glimpses of Hebrew text and photos of Zionist leaders. It all suggests we're in Israel, yet this scene is being filmed in the heart of Gaza. These Palestinian studios provide the set for a series singing the praises of the resistance movement. They've recreated the offices of the Israeli administration with props, a way for Hamas, the political wing of the armed Islamist group, to present their side of the story. The more people hate me, the more I know that my character is believable. And if I provoke Palestinian people here in the street, then I know the character is a success. These Made in Gaza TV series are a response to the wave of Israeli productions of recent years, most notably Fauda, which translates as chaos in Arabic. The Netflix hit focuses on a group of Israeli special forces who go undercover to investigate Palestinian suspects. Yet in Gaza, some say this depiction simply serves to paint Palestinians as criminals. We want an alternative model to show the Palestinian point of view and make fictional series with a spirit of resistance in the same way that other channels produce Zionist fabrications. In this series, then, the heroes are not IDF soldiers but Hamas fighters, considered to be terrorists by Israel, the US and the EU, while on the small screen, at least, they're the stars of the show. And finally, female boxers in Iraq are stepping into the ring to combat the stigma surrounding women's sports. Now, in the past, female teams were the norm, but sanctions and decades of conflict brought that to an end. Now, with Iraq's first women's boxing championship held last month, a new generation of female athletes say change is afoot. Nicholas Rushworth has the story. 16-year-old Ola Mustafa is knocking out prejudice and tackling taboos with gloves on. We live in a macho society that fights success for women in many matters, but bit by bit, people will begin to accept that women box. The more girls try to achieve their dreams, the more that society will accept them. Ola trains several times a week in this gym in the Shiite Muslim holy city of Najaf. My mother, father, brother and my coach encouraged me. My coach actually encouraged me and motivated me the most. And I've also had the support of all of my relatives. Bushra al Hajar needed that kind of support to become a boxing coach. She is 35 and a mother of two. And won gold at Iraq's first women's boxing championship held in Baghdad in December. I certainly encountered many difficulties at the start of my sports career when I began training women. People had reservations, they were prejudiced and rejected the presence of women at gyms in Najaf. But there are many gyms now, it's getting better. Iraq, historically, has had a long tradition of women in sport. Women regularly took part in regional competitions in the 1970s and 80s. But successive conflicts and a hardening of conservative social values saw that come to an end. Some coaches are calling on the authorities to invest in sports infrastructure and create the conditions for women so they go to sports centers. Hopefully the sport won't be limited to men. Women, just like men, can excel in boxing. So we ask our brothers and the people of the province to encourage women to practice this sport. 100 boxers took part in the Women's Boxing Championship in Baghdad in December. They showed that Iraqi women can deliver a blow to social taboos and make their presence felt.
And now that brings us to the end of this edition of Middle East Matters. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more world news coming up here on France 24.